Imagine you're a contestant on the classic game show, Let's Make a Deal. The host, Monty Hall, presents you with three closed doors. Behind one, brand new sports car. While behind the other two is goats. You make a choice and prepare to discover whether you will leave the studio the proud owner of a new ride or a four-legged garbage disposal. But at the last moment, Monty offers to make your choice a little easier. He opens one of the doors revealing a goat, then just gives you the option to either change your guess or stick with your original choice. So what do you do? This is the Monty Hall problem, first posed by American statistician Steve Selvin in 1975 in a letter to the journal American Statistician. For 15 years after its introduction, the puzzle was discussed by a number of academic publications but failed to make much of an impact. But when in September 1990, reader Craig F. Whitaker submitted the question to Parade Magazine's Ask Marilyn column, it unexpectedly triggered one of the most heated, controversial, and downright toxic debates in the history of mathematics. Ask Marilyn, which is run in parade since 1986, is written by Marilyn Soss Savins, who for many years was widely known as the world's smartest person. Born in St. Louis, Missouri in 1946, in 1956, at the age of 10, Voss Savant took the standard 1937 Stanford Binet test, achieving an unprecedented IQ score of 228. Later in the 1980s, she scored a 46 out of 48 on the Hovland Mega Test, which revised her IQ down to a more reasonable but still impressive 186. Based on these two scores, Voss Savant held the Guinness World Record for the highest recorded IQ from 1986 to 1989 when the category was finally retired. At first glance, the answer to the Monty Hall problem appears obvious. Your chance of picking the car, originally one in three, have now been increased to one in two. However, as you've been given no additional information as to which door the car sits behind, it makes no difference whether you stick with your original guess or switch. Your odds of winning remain the same. However, in her reply to Craig Whitaker's statement of the problem, Voss Savants gave an altogether different answer, arguing that the best strategy was, in fact, to switch your first guess. To quote, Yes, you should switch. The first door has a 1 in 3 chance of winning, but the second door has a 2 in 3 chance of winning. Here's a good way to visualize what happens. Suppose there are a million doors. You pick door number 1. Then the host, who knows what's behind the doors, will always avoid the one with the prize and opens them all except for door number 777,700. 77. You'd switch to that door pretty fast, wouldn't you? The reaction to this counterintuitive solution was swift and surprisingly hostile, with Voss Savin being bombarded with letters from several hundred readers, several with PhDs in statistics and related fields, staunchly refuting her analysis. These ranged from the relatively polite but dismissive, your answer to the question is in error, but if it is any consolation, many of my academic colleagues have also been stumped by this problem. Barry Pasternak, PhD, California Faculty Association. It ranged to the arrogant and condescending. Since you seem to enjoy coming straight to the point, I'll do the same. You blew it. Let me explain. If one door is shown to be a loser, that information changes the probability of either remaining choice, neither of which has any reason to be more likely to one half. As a professional mathematician, I'm very concerned with the general public's lack of mathematical skills. Please help by confessing your error and in the future being more careful. Robert Sachs, PhD, George Mason University. You blew it, and you blew it big. Since you seem to have difficulty grasping the basic principle at work here, I'll explain. After the host reveals a goat, you now have a one in two chance of being correct. Whether you change your selection or not, the odds are the same. There is enough mathematical illiteracy in this country, and we don't need the world's highest IQ propagating more. Shame. Scott Smith, PhD, University of Florida, to the downright misogynistic. Maybe women look at math problems differently than men. Don Edwards, Sun River, Oregon. In response to the deluge of criticism, Voss Heaven devoted her three next columns to patiently re-explaining the logic of her solution, but the majority of her respondents remained unconvinced, with one writing nearly a year later, I still think you're wrong. There is such a thing as female logic. So, is it possible that the world's smartest person actually got it wrong? Well, actually, no. Much of the confusion regarding the Monty Hall problem stems from the ambiguous manner in which it was stated in Craig Whitaker's original letter to Parade magazine. Most of those who disagree with Voss Savant's answer assume the host's choice of which door is open is entirely random, and in this case the conclusion that the contestant's chances become 50-50 would be correct. However, in Steve Selvin's original formulation of the problem, this is not the case. After all, if the host's choice of door were random, there is a good chance he would open the door with the prize behind 
behind it, ruining the game. Thus, the host must always open a door with a goat, and it is this detail which makes all the difference. To understand why, imagine the three possible scenarios when playing the game. You can either guess the prize, goat one or goat two. If you guess the prize, then your best strategy is to stay put, since switching will lose you the game. But if you choose goat one or goat two, then the best strategy is to switch. As the optimal strategy in two out of three possible scenarios is to switch, your chances of winning are two in three if you switch compared to only one in three if you stick to your original guess. So your best bet is always to switch. So how did a seemingly innocuous probability problem manage to ignite such fierce and passionate condemnation? The Montreal problem is what American philosopher Willard Quine called a vertical paradox, a result that intuitively looks false but can nonetheless be logically proven to be true. Human intuition is particularly ill-suited to dealing with problems of probability, and when presented with a counterintuitive solution, a common reaction is to simply reject it outright. In the case of Marilyn Voss Savins, this knee-jerk incredulity, along with the egos of top mathematicians and not a small amount of sexism, appear to have combined into the perfect storm of academic controversy. Thankfully, however, history appears to have vindicated Marilyn Voss Savins, with polls showing that by 1992, 56% of readers and 71% of academics had accepted her solution, compared to only 8% and 35% two years before. And even Robert Sachs of George Mason University, once among Voss Savins' harshest critics, eventually wrote her to repent his former arrogance, saying, After removing my foot from my mouth, I'm now eating humble pie. I vowed as penance to answer all the people who wrote to castigate me. It's been an intense professional embarrassment.